God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. So let's share together this morning as we look at the word of God from Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Every now and then the Lord allow us to be in a place where he would like to either use us or send us to perform certain acts for him and do certain duties for him. And because of lack of understanding of the bigger plan of God, we're hesitant to do what God wants us to do. And that creates a very high stake when God sends you to something that you don't understand or cannot comprehend. And most times, God has not ask us to try to understand what he's asking us to do but to just believe and follow him by faith and we spend time to try to figure out God and understand God and try try to feel what is God saying how is God you know all of the details that's around it but all I just need to do is to believe God that God's ways are perfect and so here you see Moses moment Moses's moment and so Moses is doing his thing this is chapter 3 of the book of Exodus is doing his thing and taking care of the flock of his father-in-law Jethro he had left Egypt you all know the story and what Moses did and Moses left Egypt and Moses became a wanted man a wanted man in Egypt and years had passed, about 40 years, and the Lord met him at the burning bush. And that's what we, we have all read in our Sunday school, right in your Bible. And so the Lord met him. The Lord told him that everybody that was seeking him, they were dead. They were dead. And the, the good thing or the lesson, the application about that is that uh, God always has a way of making his own outlive their problems. You would, you would outlive your enemies. Uh, somehow, you know, your body is, uh, would spend too much time trying to, trying to uh, uh, be, be bothered about what is after you, what is against you, the things that confront me in life and all of these things we deal with. But the fact of the matter is that I would outlive them. <laughs> when, when, the, when the storm is over, I will still be standing. So I am not so bothered about them, but I just want to be bothered about being on God's good side. So as long as I'm on God's good side, I will outlive everything that comes against me. You know, he said in the Old Testament, he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the righteous outlive them all. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> the Lord delivered him from them all, the Bible said. So Moses, the Lord said to him, uh, they were looking for you in Egypt to destroy your life. You know, Moses had done something he should not have done. Uh, but he was able to get away. And the Lord said, all of those folk who are seeking your life, they are now dead. And you can return to Egypt. And, and the same with Jesus. Jesus was being sought by Herod after Jesus was born. The Annunciation in the Magi came to, to Herod. And he was looking to kill him. And the Lord came by night and said to the blessed mother in, in Joseph, Take this child, go to Egypt. And they went into Egypt. And they've been in Egypt for a while. The Lord came and said, those who seek your life, they're dead. Now you can return. And sometimes God does those things. He, he sets you in a place to preserve you until the storm is over. And when the storm is over, he announces to you, now it's time for you to proceed. And that's why it's important that I listen to God and, and on, uh, try to be uh, attentive to what God is saying because every season is different every timing is different and God has a plan a program an agenda for every season so if I understand God's plan for every season then I should be all right 
And, and that's why I said earlier, you and I are going to outlive everything that's against us. I want to destroy our lives. And, and so I want to seek God, and I, and I want you to seek God as well. And so Moses now standing before the Lord as he observed the burning bush. And, and the Lord said to him, Moses, uh, come therefore in verse 10, chapter 3. After the Lord has told me that, I've, I've heard everything that's going on. Everything that's going on in Egypt, Moses lived for 40 years uh, ago. In, in, he probably forgot about Egypt. Now he's in media and he's trying to make a life out of himself. He's working now. He's making money, raising family. And he probably forgot all about what happened in Egypt. But the Lord didn't forget. God never forget. God never forget you. You know, you, you may think or somebody may tell you, or folks may tell you that God has forgotten you. No, he has not. He has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten me. And sometimes where we are in the journey that we are on takes so long and we think, oh, is God still in this? Yes, he is. And the fact that things are not working right doesn't mean God is not in it. If you're a child of God, the fact that things are not working the way you think it should does not mean God is not in it. God's ways are different from my way. What I think is right may not be right before God. What I think is good may not be good before God. So the circumstances that I find myself that I feel, oh Lord, why do I have to go through this? I'm a good man. I'm a good woman. I serve you. I did this. I did. And you are feeling in it that this is not right. You're being unjustly and unfairly treated. Guess what? God may just have something good coming out of that. Have you ever been in a situation after you've gone through so much and then you come out of it, you're looking back and say, God, I so thank you that I went through that situation. But remember, when you were going through that situation, I was going through that situation, we were complaining. But it was after the fact that we looked back and said, wow, it worked for my good. But God knew it all along. So when I was complaining, God would laugh in heaven. If you dare know why I let you go through this and what is on the other side, you will be rejoicing now. And so there are times that we do that. And here Moses, uh, ha having this conversation uh, uh, God having this conversation with Moses, Moses didn't really understand where God was going with it. <laughs> and sometimes it takes a while for God to get to the point. <laughs> and he said, God, what are you trying to tell me? He said, hold on. And he tells you more stories and more stories until he gets to the point. And God is telling Moses all of these good things. That I've seen what's going on in Egypt. I have come, in verse 8, I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptian. And Moses would have been rejoicing in him. Oh, God has come to deliver them. Praise the Lord. God has seen everything that's going on. Praise the Lord. Uh, God is saying all of these things. Uh, and, then, and then in verse 10, God said, <laughs> Come now, therefore. Where was Moses? Moses was right there. Moses was right there. But God, God is drawing his attention. After he said all of those things, come now, therefore. And Moses said, well, I've been here all along. He said, no, no, I want you to give me your undivided attention now. <laughs> because I have something to say. Moses' mind is drifting. He's drifting to all of the good things that God is saying, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And the Lord said, I know I'll do it, but I'm going to use you to do it. <laughs> and Moses would have been so startled. Huh? Lord, huh? huh? What? Say that again. Say, come. I will send you to who? Unto Pharaoh. This is what God said to him. The stakes are high. When the stakes are so high, what should I do? That's what we're considering today. When the stakes are high. What shall I do is the question. Hmm? Now, God said, I will deliver them. I heard everything that's going on over there. 
And Moses will be rejoicing. Yes, God is coming after Pharaoh. Those Pharaoh people who did all this to me, God is coming after them now. They're going to find out. And the Lord said, come, Moses. I will send you unto Pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. That's a very high stake, a tall order. Huh? The same pharaohs who were looking for him to kill him. And God said, go to Pharaoh. Go to Pharaoh. Not say go to Egypt. Go to Pharaoh. It was very specific. Go to Pharaoh. And now what will Moses do after hearing this? And look at what Moses said in verse 11. And Moses said unto the Lord. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? No, I left 40 years ago. Can't even remember my way to Pharaoh. Who am I? What do I have to be there? I was drawn out of water. And Pharaoh's daughter took me, raised in Pharaoh, made some mistakes. And I had to leave, fearing for my life. And I'm settled now. In meeting, I have a wife, I have kids, I have a business running. And Lord, you want me to stop all of this and go back to that place that I left 40 years ago? God? And Moses would have been asking this question. Who am I that I will go to Pharaoh? Of course, Moses counted himself so small before Pharaoh. Moses, Moses taught himself so small before Pharaoh. You know the times that we think like that? When the children of Israel were sent, spies sent to, to spy out the promised land. And some of them who came out of there, besides Joshua and Caleb, said before the giants we were grasshoppers. That's what they said. It was not the people who called them grasshopper. They called themselves grasshopper. So sometimes we're faced with this high stake. We look at how high the mountain is. How tall it is. How steep it is. We feel so inadequate. But like we've said many times. We don't tell God how big our mountain is. But we tell the mountain how big our God is. And that's the attitude of a child of God. Because God is bigger than every problem. He's bigger than every mountain. He's bigger than everything. So however big the thing is or great it is, what I don't want to do, number one, is minimize my God. That's number one. When you are faced with high stakes in life, when I'm faced with high stakes in life, it doesn't matter how difficult the situation is, doesn't matter how tough it is, do not minimize your God. Your God and my God is bigger than anything. He can move mountains. And sometimes we feel that these things are so far-fetched. And it reminds me of this lady, Christian lady, who was living a place and have heard the scripture that if you say to the mountain be thou removed it shall be removed if you believe and shall not doubt in your heart it shall be just as you have spoken and she thought she would try it out and there was this mountain that's close to her house and she got home after church and she looked at the mountain and said be thou removed uh, but nothing happened and she continued to believe. And it wasn't far from then. The government decided that they're going to build a road, a highway through that area. And they're going to cut through the mountain. And they brought out all of their material and their instrument and equipment. And, and they pulled down the mountain that this woman had prayed against. And a highway came through it. And she rejoiced because she remembered her prayer. And, and that, that's just a story that sometimes we look, well, uh, uh, can God really do that? Maybe it's coincidental. 
I don't believe in coincidence. I believe in God's incident. I believe her prayer did something. God wanted to communicate something to her. That regardless of what it is, that I can take care of it one way or the other. And so it doesn't matter how big, how great, how high, tall, or steep it may be. Never you minimize your God. Stand with God. Moses started out by expressing levels of inadequacies. Who am I to go to Pharaoh? But he is standing before a God that is greater and bigger than Pharaoh. God was not asking him to do it in his own power. Look at where God started. God said, I will deliver them. I have come to deliver them. Uh, he just needed Moses as the instrument of deliverance. Uh, sometime in God's uh, program and agenda, we are instruments of God's deliverance. And he just wants to walk through you and walk through me. If God wants to create a miracle, it's not me to think about how it will happen. It is, that's belong to God, how it will happen. But I just believe that it will happen because God said it. And I will be that instrument of change. The instrument of bringing to bear the power of God. Allowing God to walk through me. All Moses would have done was to say, God, if you said you will, I will too. Just walk through me. I'm ready to go to Egypt now and to stand before that Pharaoh. But Moses said, Lord, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? And he said, who am I that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? But God was not asking him. God wanted to do it through him. Uh, God wanted to do it through him. In verse 8, you see what the Lord said. I am come down to deliver them. I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of Egypt. And to bring them out of the land unto a land and a large land. Unto a land that flows with milk and with honey. Unto the place of the Canaanite, the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites. That's what the Lord said. But Moses is saying now, who am I to do these things? Uh, he didn't quite understand but that it's not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Uh, and in verse 12, he said, uh, and he said, certainly, I will do what? Be with thee. Uh, God changed the conversation again. He said, certainly, I will be with thee. And now this will be a token that indeed I will be with thee. Uh, and the Lord showed him some great signs on that day. And Moses uh, uh, then began to ask God some questions. A and he said in verse 14, uh, the Lord replying to Moses. Uh, let's look at verse 13. And Moses said unto the Lord, when I come unto the children of Israel. Now pay attention to that. When I come unto the children of Israel. Uh, in verse 10, he said, I will send you to who? To Pharaoh. I will send you to Pharaoh. And the mission was to deliver the people out of Egypt. But. God said, I will send you to Pharaoh to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. So Moses' question is interesting here. First of all, he tried to minimize the power of God by saying that who am I? And that's number one lesson. Do not minimize the power of your God under any circumstances. And the second thing is found here too in Moses' conversation with God. And Moses said to God, Behold, in verse 13, Behold, when I come, not to Pharaoh, <laughs> not to Pharaoh, he's asking, because the Lord now has clarified that Moses is not you. I will be with you. And I will, I will strengthen you. I will speak through you. I will do all of the things that the Lord said he'll do. And Moses asked this question of the Lord, and when I read it, I found it very intriguing. And Moses said, when I come to the children of Israel, 
and shall say unto them, the Lord, your God, your, the God of your father, hath sent me unto you. They shall say unto me, what is your name? And what shall I say to them? <laughs> Glory to God. Moses, Moses is sent to Pharaoh. God said, go to Pharaoh. I'm going to send you to Pharaoh. And then the reply is, when I come to the children of Israel. Uh, going to Pharaoh was not really the mission. The mission for God and Moses was to deliver the children of Israel. Not just to have a meeting with Pharaoh. <laughs> so Moses says, after the clarification by God that I'll be with you, he now understands where God is going with this. So he stopped focusing on Pharaoh. Because to focus on Pharaoh will be a distraction. He's focusing on the mission. And that's why he's asking God here, now, when I go to the children of Israel, what will I say to them? That's what is more important. It's not Pharaoh. Because now he knows that God will take care of Pharaoh. That Pharaoh is no match for God. God will take care of that. Uh, but the most important thing to Pharaoh now is a mission. And that should be our priority. My priority should be the mission. Not the distractors. <laughs> because God will take care of that. You remember what I said some time ago. Sometimes we focus on the problem and not the promise. God will take care of the problem. The problem is no match for God. What is consuming my time and your time is the focus on the problem. And that's why we're not getting to where we're going. Now, if you're on a journey, what will be your focus? The destination. That's your focus. You will, you will easily make it to your destination if you stay focused on your destination. The moment you start getting distracted by everything that happened the highway, you never get there. You will never get there. Because there are going to be a lot of drama on the highway. Glory to God. You know, sometimes I drive and, and then you have this traffic just backing up. And then you get there, there's really nothing other than folk are just looking. They're looking at a man who's standing by the, by the side of the road. If you want to slow down traffic, I guarantee you, you do this today, you'll find out that this is true. You just get on 95 and park your vehicle and just stand on the highway. Doing nothing. Nothing happened to your vehicle. Nothing happened to you. You just stand there. You know what's going to happen? Folk are going to drive by. Everybody's going to be looking at you. And they'll back up traffic. Miles. That man who is standing by the highway out of his car is just a distraction. He got nothing to do to you. Had no contribution to your life. Does not add value to you. He doesn't help you get to your destination. As long as you stay fixated on him, you slow down yourself. Moses will slow down himself if he stay focused on Pharaoh. God will take care of Pharaoh. So his mission is to get the children of Israel out. And so he's asking God, when I get there to them, what will I say to them? Because I know you have taken care of Pharaoh. When Jesus said, John chapter 10, Verse 10, he said, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, but I am come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. What does that mean to you? He said, I am come. Didn't say I have come or I will come. Or... No, he said, I am come. He said, you reading that word, it's not a promise. 
not a prayer. It's a purpose. Mm -mm. It's a purpose. And what he's saying is that for this reason, I'm here. That you will have a life and have it abundantly. In other words, I already have it. If I have Jesus, I already have it. So I, I'm, now, I'm now focused on how to have it. My time is consumed on how to have it. I leave that to God. God will take care of that. He'll take care of the pharaohs, the distractors, the mountains, the things I cannot. Now, Moses couldn't handle Pharaoh. Pharaoh is much on a natural level, plain field, Moses. Pharaoh is much larger than Moses. Pharaoh controls all Egypt, controls the armies of Egypt. Pharaoh was a powerful figure. So power to power, Moses by himself could not stand Pharaoh. So it will be, it will be a waste of time if Moses started to try to get Pharaoh. So he left that for God. So tell lesson, what you cannot do, leave it to God. Don't try to handle it yourself because you can't. And that's why some of us are where we are today. We're trying to handle things we cannot handle. You can't. When I slept last night, I didn't know how I was going to wake up. You know, if I, if I start wondering, Lord, am I going to wake up? How am I going to wake up? When am I going to wake up? I would not sleep. I would be frustrated all night. I will be thinking all night. I will be miserable all night. But if I leave that to God, I go to sleep. And I just wake up. <laughs> Ask me what happened last night. I don't know. <laughs> I knew that I went to sleep at some point. You know, some folks say, when did you go to bed last night? 10 o'clock. You lie. Because you didn't know when you slept. You didn't know the exact time. When you, you lay down at 10, but you didn't know the exact time that your body shut down. You didn't know that. You didn't know whether you were going to open your eyes the next day. <laughs> you didn't know that. <laughs> Glory to God. We have no control over those things. So why should I burden myself thinking about those things? I give it to God. Those are things that God will serve and God can. Those are things that are in the realm of God. They're not in my realm. So I don't attempt to try to handle those things. Give it to God. This is a lesson Moses learned here. Number one, you should not never, I should never minimize my God. Don't do that. Never minimize him or his power or his grace and his glory or what he can do. God can do everything. And Moses stay focused on the mission. What's your mission? What, what, what did you set out with God after you had a, plan in, a meeting with God this year? Say, God, what are we going to do? And God said, I want you to do A, B, C, D. And now we, we, we're fixated on how will I do A, B, C, D. What are the things that will hinder me from doing A, B, C, D? Those are the things that consume me now. And when somebody, especially somebody, walk by and say, well, that's not possible. But we learn to say, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. But sometimes I take what that man, that woman said, and I'm discouraged about my mission. Because my focus has changed by what somebody said. It should not be. Moses would never have delivered Israel from Egypt if he was so focused on Pharaoh. He was not a match for Pharaoh. He could never take on Pharaoh. He ran for Pharaoh. He was being sought after. And now he's been asked to go back there to stand before this man. And Moses was afraid to do that. And, and if he continued to dwell on that, his anxiety and his fear would continue to increase. But the Lord said to him, I will be with you. Let's leave Pharaoh out of this equation. Let's focus on the mission. And he began to ask him, when I get there, 
What will I say to them to convince them that truly God has sent me? Because that's really what matters. It's them getting out. It's not me having a meeting with Pharaoh. And sometimes when we stay in, in that place, that, God, that, that doesn't really add anything to God's plan for our lives. And Moses would not want to do that. And the Lord answered them and said, Moses, verse 14, God said to Moses, when you get there, tell them I am that I am. Oh, I, I am who I said I am. So just tell them that. Very simple. God didn't go into, well, when you get over there, call them all, tell them I'm the God of the, He already did all that. God of Abraham, God of Isaac. He already told him that. He said, you want them to know my name? When you get there, tell them I'm the self-existent one. I'm the one who was, who is, and who is to come. He said, I am that I am is my name. He said, when you get there, thou shalt say to him, I am has sent you. And that's powerful. I am have sent you. And, and for Moses, that was real. And God made it clear to him that the all-powerful God, the almighty God, the self-existent God, the one who can do and undo, he said, I have sent you. You didn't send yourself. And that should be a lesson for all of us. I did not send myself. <laughs> when God gives me a mission, I did not send myself. No soldier go to war on his own account. No. No. When soldiers go to war, they go to war on behalf of the country that sent them. They are emissaries of their country. They are ambassadors of their own country. Now, how many of those soldiers out there worrying, when am I going to get my next armor? When am I going to get my next uniform? Maybe in some countries they do, but most countries like here, you are not bothered about that. Because those are supplied by who? By the government. By those who sent you. Everything that you need, the vehicles, the planes, and all of that is provided by the government who sent you. You're not sitting and calculating how much of this are we going to need? Where are we going to get them? Where are we going to get? No, they're all provided for them. If I sign up today, everything that I need is provided for me. So when God said, I have sent you, where there is a vision, there's a provision. What is a provision? Something that is provided ahead of time. God already made provision for him when he sent him. And he didn't need to bother about anything else. Because God is reminding him, you're not going on your own accord. You're not alone in this. You didn't choose this. You did not choose this. You did not choose this. I chose you to do this. Just trust me. And it's going to be all right, Moses. I tell them, I sent you. I am sent you. The greatest one sent you. You have everything that you need. Whatever you need, it's already provided for you. Moses didn't have to, well, I need to save up. I'm going to Egypt. I need to save up. He didn't have to do that. Maybe Moses had no savings. But he was going on the account of the God that sent him. So are you going on the account of God who sent you? Or are you going alone? Don't go alone. Go on the account of God who sent you. So when the stakes are high, remember that you didn't send yourself. That God sent you. God gave you that word. You know, sometimes we forget what God said to us. God gave you a promise and you've been believing on the promises and singing the song and the promises of God that stand and all of that. And then down the road when things look a little fuzzy, 
And now you're doubting yourself. You're wondering, is this really God? And sometimes we forget what God said. The promise that God made to us. We forget. But there's a time we must always remind ourselves what he said. Encourage yourself. Yes, I remember that I prayed over this thing. And I felt so confident in my spirit that God heard my prayer. And now why am I doubting myself? And then you get up from your doubting situation and say, I choose to believe God now. I know he cannot lie. What he said he'll do, he'll do it. And then you start moving. You start moving. What you just did is encourage yourself in the Lord to keep moving because the mission is greater than the mission now. The mission is greater. And this is what God was saying to Moses. Because the journey was not going to be easy. Moses needed all of this. It wasn't going to be easy. And you know God said to, to Moses too. And said when you get over there. Pharaoh is not going to let you all leave. He said it's not. He said Pharaoh is going to be stubborn. He's not going to let you leave. But I got a plan. And this is my plan. And God told him the plan. He said you go now. When he is stubborn. Always remember, I have a plan for you. And Moses had all of this. And not only that, he's going to have to meet with Pharaoh, he's going to have to convince over three million people to get out and leave. Three million. He had a lot in his hand. And he needed all of this. And sometimes we have so much in our head. And so much in our hand. And we feel, how am I ever going to be able to sort through this? And that is when you need God. Because you cannot do it by yourself. Let God come in the situation. And let it help you to sort it out. And never you give up. No, give in. When God's word is in your hand, never you give up nor give in. It is not an option. It is not an option for a child of God to walk away from the plan of God for his life. Now to stop believing what God said. We must never make God a liar. And Moses was not willing to do that. And you know the end of the story. Moses went. On the account of God. God supplied everything. Moses complained. I, I'm a stammerer. I said no problem. I got something for that. Glory to God. They're not going to listen to me. I got something for that. So everything that Moses brought up. God already had a plan for it. You know God is not in heaven. Just trying to make plans today for me. He already made it before I was born. Before God starts anything, he already finished it before he started what he's doing. Because all of those things are conceived in God's heart and, 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 and it's been done before it was done. There's nothing stopping it. When God makes promises, it cannot be stopped because it's already done before he said it. It's already in motion. That's why the Bible said the promise of God cannot fail. The word of God cannot fail. Heaven and earth may pass away, not a jot of his word will go on fulfill. Because before he says it, it's already done. Before he said, let there be light, there was already light. It was in him. In him was light. And the light was the life of the world. That's what the Bible said. It was already in him. So you couldn't stop it. Darkness couldn't stop it. Devil couldn't stop it. Evil couldn't stop it. Nothing can stop the plan of God. If God said this is who you are going to, you will not die until you be what God said you will be. It's impossible. I just believe that with every fiber of my body. If God said I'm going to bless you, he's going to bless you. If he's going to lift you up, he will. It don't matter what the world said. Seven billion people can gather together and say no, this is not going to happen. God will take care of them. That's not up to me. God will take care of that. I just need to stay focused with the mission. What God said do. And don't let the distractors delay you. There are folks who are distracted. Just like I said, my example with the highway thing. The devil is standing by the highway as you are driving past. And he's disguised himself. 
Sometimes so beautiful, sometimes so enticing. And there are folk who, who slow down. Others will stop their car. They want to observe what this man is up to here. And that delays them. And by the time they get back on it, the road is already cut in half. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Cannot afford to be distracted. And Moses did go to Egypt. And Moses did meet with Pharaoh. And Moses did meet with the elders of Israel. And Moses did, by the hand of God, deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. And lastly, God can turn your inadequacies into adequacies. He can do that. He can. He can. What you have that you thought is no good, God can make it good. Why did I say that? Moses came and brought his rod and I just go, the Bible is so sweet. It, when he it started, it was the rod of Moses. It was the rod of Moses when the story started. But when it was all said and done, it became the rod of God. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> it became the rod of God. How? Because God took it over. And Moses brought his rod and God said, what's that with you? Moses said, this is a dead, dead piece of wood that I use on, on my ship. And he said, I'm going to show you something that I can, I can turn around something that's dead. I can make it alive. And said, Moses, drop it. And when Moses did that, Moses handed it over to God. And that's a huge lesson. If you, if you want to really work with God, be willing to hand everything to God. You have to be willing. If you're not willing to hand everything to God, you're not ready yet. And Moses, that was one of the prizes, possession of Moses. He needs it. Can't take care of his business without it. But God said, give it to me. Just like he said to Abraham, give me your son. Not that one, the one you love. God clarify it. <laughs> so there's no mistake or ambiguity. He said, give me your son. And I said, the one that you truly love, you know what I'm talking about. And Abraham said, yes, Lord, I, I knew what you're talking about. I'm not going to cheat. I'll give you the right one. But you know the end of the story, how God said to Abraham, now I know Abraham is my friend. Now I know. So Moses was willing. And when Moses dropped it, it became a serpent. And, God, and Moses almost ran away. And God said, no, pick it up. Pick it up. And he did. And he became the staff again. And from that moment, it became the rod of God. Go read it. All through Moses' journey to Egypt and out of there, he was holding down the rod of God. So to Moses, that was a sign. You couldn't take that from him. He knew beyond every doubt that God was with him. And you know what happened to the Red Sea? What happened with the rod? Glory to God. Hallelujah. So when God breathed in you, God, God breathed upon your life. You are not that man that everybody used to know. You are the man of God that is now. You're the man of God, the woman of God that is now. And nothing, nothing by the power of God will be able to overcome you. By your heads as you pray. By your heads as you pray. Tell him, Lord, help me. That when the stakes are high, I will never minimize you. Don't let me doubt you. Let me always remember that you are God almighty. The maker of the heavens and the earth. That you can do anything. You can do anything. Never let me minimize you, God. Take a moment. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. And pray, God, help me to stay focused on the mission. Not the distractors. Focus on the mission. To stay with it. Because that's most important. Focus on the things that are of eternal value. That are of value to God. That are of value to God. Tell him, Lord, help me to be able to give it all to you. To hand it to you. Because I trust you that you can make it better. In the name of Jesus. I trust you, you can make it better. And the things that you cannot handle, that are too great and too big, learn to give them to God. Tell him, Lord, help me. Sometimes it's hard. It's hard to let go. Our human ego. Sometimes don't let us let go. But we need the enablement of the spirit. It's not a sign of weakness to say, God, I give it to you. 
Lord, help me out here. I need you. I need you. Tell him, God, give me the courage to be able to give to you that which I cannot handle. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nation.